I've heard the word uh, diversity quite a few times, and I don't have a clue what it means. Uh, it seems to mean everything for everyone. I've been struggling to understand how race is actually factoring into the admissions process here and whether there's any actual redressable injury that arises. There's a, a couple clips there, but in a marathon session that lasted for almost five hours on Monday, Supreme Court justices heard arguments in the case that could fundamentally change the college admissions process. Kenny Shu is the president of Color Us United, author of Inconvenient Minority and host of the Inconvenient Minority podcast. Kenny joins us live. Uh, thanks so much for coming on. I, let's start with that. I know you heard uh, the five hours, obviously a lot of sound to go through, but the sound bites that you just heard from uh, uh, Kentaji Brown-Jackson and Clarence Thomas, your thoughts on that? So I listened to all five hours of the Harvard UNC cases where the Asian Americans are alleging discrimination by these universities in the name of diversity. And they provided a, over 150 pages of evidence to support their case. An Asian American has to score over 270 points higher on the SAT to have the same chance of admission as an African American. Asians are frequently rated the lowest personality score by Harvard, even though they have the highest alumni interviews and teacher recommendations. And Katanji Brown Jackson chooses to simply ignore all of this evidence and blithely says, I don't understand the evidence for discrimination against Asians. I can't see it. Uh, please educate me. Uh, it's very, it's almost apparent that she had, didn't even read the brief or something like that. Uh, this is just a very low, um, this is a, a very, a very uh, low uh, move by the Supreme Court justice, and I think it justifies our case. Justice Clarence Thomas dismissing an argument from a lawyer uh, yesterday who was defending race-based affirmative action, saying he doesn't put much stock in the argument that it's needed to create diversity at U.S. colleges today. Um, what are your thoughts on, on this? How could, in terms of the admissions process it, within colleges, do you think that, how, how could this change the admissions process, in your opinion? Exactly, because stressed at this case from both sides is this importance of diversity. I think Clarence Thomas is one of the few justices to really call them out on this and say, why is diversity so important, especially at the cost of admitting the most qualified candidate? Remember, we're not just talking about diversity here. We're talking about admitting a more diverse candidate in favor of a more qualified candidate. That's the heart of the issue right here. And I'm president of Color Us United, and we advocate for a meritocratic colorblind society. And guess what? I've seen organizations use this diversity language all the time as an excuse for them to admit people with lower credentials and to pass over people who are more qualified. So I don't buy this diversity uh, argument that Harvard's trying to put in, saying we need to discriminate against Asians to make a more diverse student body. I see it as an excuse to do their own racial balancing procedures that they find so important. Uh, according to, I wanted to show this too as well, research done by Duke University, uh, the professor and, and affirmative action expert here uh, put this out saying this, an Asian American male with a 25% chance of admission would see his odds increase to a 36% chance if he were white and an astounding 95% chance if he were black. Again, that there. Uh, from Duke, one of the professors there. Your thoughts on that? So one of the key arguments that Harvard produced last year was that they said that race is just one of 40 different factors that they use to determine a person's application. If race was just one of 40 and was so little used in their application process, why would we have statistics like that? Why would an Asian American with 25% chance of getting in based on his academic credentials go to 75% if he were Hispanic and 95% if he were black and even 35% if he were white, right? Uh, Harvard has a racial hierarchy. They're gonna say race is just one of many factors. It's just one thing we don't consider every, we consider the whole person. Yeah, they consider the whole person with regards to race, with regards to their racial balancing. They tout diversity and inclusion all the time. Race is the thing that they care about.
I think it was Sandra Day O'Connor that said that affirmative action wouldn't be needed within 25 years. Uh, again, this is being argued now. There should be some sort of de decision opinion by uh, June. Bottom line, uh, I'll give you about 30 seconds on this. What do you expect from this court on affirmative action? Is it done? I expect us to win, and I want America to not be surprised that the Supreme Court rules against racial discrimination. Oh, well, who knew, you know? But if you read my book, An Inconvenient Minority, it's been a long struggle even just to get to this point. We sued Harvard back in 2014. It's been an eight-year-long case. We lost at district court level, but I think we're going to win at the Supreme Court level. All right, we'll leave it right there. We appreciate you taking the time with us this morning on that as uh, we've heard uh, the arguments there beginning yesterday. Kenny Shu, thank you. Thank you. No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me, me how, how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.